prejudice. Wrote a song about it. Like to hear it? Here it go. Freedom Mind. You are listening to the Hall of Man at this point. This is your boy, Dizzy Mac, and Cheryl Smith, the first lady of Sports Talk. Our panel includes Joe Midas Mind. Yeah, that's my partner of YourProsperityInsights.com. First lady, it's a big week, so let's not even keep them waiting. We're ready for what you say. Each week we try to figure out what is going on in the sports world. Not the plays of the week, more like the players of the week. Are they trying to tell us something? So we ask, what you saying? Fly, little birdie, fly. Time keeps on slipping into the future. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. So I want to fly like an eagle to the sea. Fly like an eagle. Let the spirit carry me. I want to fly, fly right into the future. The little birdie known as Tiger Woods wish he could fly far away back to a time when he stalked the fairways and struck fear on the golf course. After he shot a career-worth 82 and missed the cut at the Phoenix Open, it is time for Tiger to admit the roar is gone. Tony the Tiger, Bengal Tigers, and the Steve Miller band is asking, what you saying? The roar is definitely gone from Tiger Woods. We are continuing to witness the rapid decline of Tiger. The toothless one is a mere shell of himself. He has become an ordinary golfer instead of an extraordinary golfer. Tiger is ranked 47th, and he could fall out of the top 50 after this last debacle. What is wrong with Tiger? What is wrong with him? He says his injuries are not the issue. It's not the issue. He just needs to practice. Hmm. He is still not right with his swing. He says his in-between swing patterns. I mean, Tiger comes up with all types of excuses regarding his swing. I think Tiger needs to look for a big-time swing coach to assist him so he can get better with his short game. He's missing chip shots, and he just doesn't have the confidence that the Tiger we all knew had. Back in the day, and I'm sorry to say that, it is way back in the day. <laughs> I know, you know my boo, I just don't understand what's going on, but he needs to get some help. I don't think Tiger can do it by himself. Tiger definitely needs some coaching, and I just think he needs to get this under control, because if not, I don't think he will ever reach Jack Nicholson's all-time majors. So, Dizzy Mac. What's going on hey, with your boy? You know what? I, I tried to get with him and tried to ask. Him. I said, hey, man, why you over here getting your teeth knocked out when you should be in South Beach hanging with First Lady your boo? Yet you over here chasing this other one thinking, you know, you're going to get publicity. Well, hey, you're not going to get publicity by wearing a mask. And what did that do? That camera found your front teeth and knocked them out. Boom. So you should have been there with First Lady. Listening to her. Because he up there with Liz Vaughn, huh? He up there with Liz Vaughn, up there trying to, well, you know, that's who you write off. So he had all types of excuses. Well, you don't see uh, Brown Brothers on the slopes. Okay. Uh, uh, that's why they knocked your teeth out over there because you should have had your brown butt chilling in the first place. So it should have been here chilling. But see, I think he needs a coach like you. Just, to, just you know, I don't think it's the the physical first lady. I think it's the mental. I think it's the mental. I mean, what have we ever seen Tiger shoot that bad and then come back and say, I'm only here because if I wasn't, I'd get fined. I mean, you know, I mean, <laughs> Tiger making jokes like that. He would have been, he would have been, he would have been short. What are you talking about? You know, Tiger, Tiger get real fine when you question him about a bad round of golf. He was just too happy. Joe, hey, I don't know. I mean, I think he didn't already count his money and figured, hey, I can just ride it on out into the sunset. I don't know, first lady, but hey, I, I can just stick with you. Yeah, you're right about that. Joe, 
What you thinking about this and Tiger? You going to help him with his golf swing? First Lady, I actually wrote him a personal letter uh, last night and, and got it out of here. I am hoping uh, that I can persuade him to come to Dallas and take his mind off things for a while. The problem is just like Dizzy Mack is saying, um, it's not all physical, and a lot of it is mental, and a lot of what we take as confidence comes from the people around him. Now, I don't want to reveal too much, but I had to let him know you need to put Lindsey Barnes down. Come here to Dallas. I can get you a lineup of all-star tanks that will get their swing back on the way. That's true. That's true. The man has to be who the man is. <laughs> and we got the all-star tanks for him, and we can keep it on the low. And the next thing you know, he'll be back winning majors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to get back to that. Uh, Joe, uh, Joe uh, and, and we know that Dallas know how to do that when they got the Cowboys up there. <laughs> you know we do. <laughs> they know how to keep hey, stuff boy. on the dial low up in Dallas, boy. Hey, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Disappear all up off the back of map. Michael Irvin, dope man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Dizzy Mac, over to you. Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years, rocking my tears, putting suckers in fear, making the tears rain down like a monsoon. Listen to the bass go boom, 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 boom. Explosion overpowering over the competition. I'm towering. Wrecking shop when I drop these books that'll make you call the cops. Don't you dare stay. You better move. Don't ever compare me to the rest of the all get you sliced and diced. Competition paying the price. I'm gonna knock you out. Huh. I'm gonna say knock you out. Huh. We're not talking about Pink Floyd, Herbie Hancock, or Jack Johnson. We're talking about the knockout punch landed by the NBA commissioner on the all star host of Damian Dane Lillard of Portland. Dane was competing for a spot vacated by Kobe Bryant. We wonder why Kobe deserved an all-star spot. Carl the Mailman Malone, George Iceman, Irv Gervin, and Scotty Pippen are asking, what you saying? Well, you kind of you kind of don't understand the decision in a way. You replace like position with the person that plays a like position. I thought. It was very, very strange how he just slipped in the Marcus Boogie Cousins to seal Kobe's spot. The Marcus Boogie Cousins is 6'11", 275, man. You know, that little play is God, and he's been lighting it up. Ah, I think they got it wrong. I think. And, you know, Kobe, he's going to get the sympathetic popular vote. That's not saying he's the most deserving for the spot, but that's why he got it. I mean, hey, I, I don't think he deserved it off his play, but he definitely deserved it, you know, in the fans' eyes of being, hey, a long, tenured, and I'm talking long in the tooth, <laughs> NBA player. So, <laughs> I mean, his old ass, you know, we told him last time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe. I mean, what's up with the commissioner making that choice on the all-star team? What you got to say, bro? Mac, I think the commissioner just, you know, sometimes we don't know everything. And, and maybe he just, maybe he's just not down for, for Damian Lillard. I, I don't understand it either. I bring a big man here to do a little man's job. And a little man we could have got highlights out of. This is the all-star game we're talking about. So we're talking about speed. Uh, the defense is going to be dreadfully lacking during this game because it's to entertain the fans. How did Kobe get there in the first place? Name recognition. You know, people just vote for, well, that's a name. Here's an old legend. And like you said, an old legend. But I was really impressed with uh, how Daniel Lillard responded to it. He said, be so good that you cannot be ignored and that he was going to keep driving forward. And I think that kind of uh, 
resoluteness and power and perception of how the public is going to see that statement means that he will be there many years to come in the future. Spoken like a true person that knows talent when he sees it. My partner. First lady, I mean, it's politics, we know. But we all know. It stinks. Yes, things did. I mean, this was, to me, the biggest snub for the All-Star this year. Portland has the sixth best record in the entire league, and they only have one person representing them on the All-Star team. And the Thunder have two people representing them, OKC, and they're not even in playoff contention. They're four games out of um, to be in the A spot. I mean, let's face it, there's something wrong with choosing the All-Star game. Now, we know the fans are going to choose Kobe Bryant because Kobe is, um, you know, he he's has a name, and that's they're going to go with the name person. Unfortunately, he shouldn't, have, he shouldn't have been there, but, hey, that's what it happens. The fans are picking the starters. But I didn't understand how the coaches, though, how could the coaches not be aware of Damian Litter's value? He missed the clutch. I mean, he's leading the league in fourth quarter points. I mean, he's having a career year. He's averaging 21.8 point, 6.2 assists. He's mm. fifth in the league in three-point field goals. I, I mean, I don't understand how they could not have chosen him to begin with. They shouldn't even left it up to Adam Silver to pick a replacement. He went with um, DeMarcus Cousins because he usually goes with the player that has the, the next amount of votes. But I think the coaches should have picked Damian Litter. And I think he should have been before Chris Paul and Durant, Kevin Durant, because he's having a better year. But, yeah, let's say the case, KD hasn't played that many games. The coaches picked him again because of his name and who he is. So, yeah, there's something wrong. So I don't blame Damian Lillard. Excuse me, I can't even say his name. I'm so upset. I'm upset like he was upset because he got a chip on his shoulder. You heard his uh, news conference? I mean, he was really upset with the coaches and Adam Silver. So, I mean, I'm going to be aware. You know, they better be aware of him because he's going to be lethal. You know, have to, you know, it's just a shame. But that's the way the all-star game goes. Somebody is always left out. Always. First lady hit with a brick. Hit with a brick. Hey, Joe, let's tell first lady got off the soapbox because she was on one this morning. <laughs> she on it. Hey, on top you of it. it. Hey, you on top of it, first lady. And since you on top of it, please take us to the break. Stay tuned. Coming up next, we have a performance from Dante J on the first part of Shout Out. Free Mr. Vine. Credit card debt was kicking my butt. Filing for bankruptcy was not for me. I spoke with those debt consolidation people who only wanted me to keep the debt I had for what seemed like a century. A friend said, your debt destroyed. I said, what? They said, your debt destroyed. They said, contact Sharon at your debt destroyed and let her team of experts eliminate your debt while building up your credit worthiness. I contacted Sharon, and she put her team to work to destroy my debt with a plan that was easy to follow and gave me and my family peace of mind. Don't consolidate your debt. Eliminate your debt. Contact Sharon at YourDebtDestroyed.com or call her at 888-431-2829, extension 2. The music flows in. From around the globe to get a shout out from our panel. First lady, I can't wait to get a meeting from Dante J. Over to you. On Shout Out, we feature new independent artists who are looking to find their shining star. If we like what we hear, we'll give the track a shout out. If we don't like it, we hit the mute. Today we have Dante J. out of Houston, Texas, Texas with an album, No Evil. Dante J, an indie hip-hop artist out of Houston, Texas, who currently is an artist who is developing under Guerrilla Music Management, a hip-hop sound with R&B and pop and rock influences 
to come together to make an indie hip-hop style. DJ, let's hear Wind It Up. Pass me a banana. Gorilla, I'm 
thinking all it comprised uh, African American straight banging in the prison system. So <laughs> they titled themselves Guerrilla Music Management, and they can put out a lifestyle song like that. I got to give it to the thumbs up because what's coming next must be hell and high water. <laughs> All right, Joe, that's yeah. the way you explain that, okay? So I'm going to give it a shout-out, too. I thought it had a nice little groove to it. Um, as we always like to say, he stayed in his lane with what type of music he was making, and um, it, it was, the words were pretty decent. I mean, I, it, it wasn't – I'm going to give it a shout-out. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, with, I mean, we'll hear another performance from Dante J on part two of Shout Out. It's time for my favorite underwater friend. It's time for Flip It. Give us a shake, with Flip It. Since LeBron James 
And similar to LeBron, when LeBron left Cleveland, Durant is in need of a championship to validate his career. It hasn't happened in OKC, and it definitely will not happen in the NYC, but it could happen in D.C. KD joining the Knicks is not good because he and Melo do not complement each other. They both are volume shooters that need the ball. If KD thinks that Westbrook shoots too much, he will never, and I mean never, see the ball with Melo. And speaking of Westbrook, the Knicks do not have a penetrating guard that can pass to KD on the wing. Now, KD is a shy, humble person. He would not even be able to handle that pressure of playing in front of the demanding fans of New York City, the, the, the demanding media. And if he thinks that the team will be losing, I mean, come on now. The media is terrible in New York. They will be on him like a wolf on some sheep. Ooh. <laughs> wolf on sheep. Kat, I mean, come on. Kevin, Kevin Durant needs to bypass. He needs to bypass NYC and take the Underground Railroad to D.C. <laughs> All right, all right. Holy Harriet Tubman. <laughs> well, you know we have to flip the script, and so we're going to ask the panel to defend. The best move Kevin Durant can make is to get a ring is going with the Zen. Best move he can make. Dizzy Mac, the fan. Y'all know. Still gonna look at Durant and say, "Are you a sheep or a wolf?" A sheep or a wolf. <laughs> and when Durant says, "He gonna know," because you got probably the most efficient player in Durant. Durant don't need a lot of shots. He'll get to the line. He'll shoot 50%. He'll shoot 40% from three. He'll shoot 90% from the line. And he can do it in under 20 shots and still hit 25, 28 points easily. You plug that in and you see Carmelo. They're looking at Carmelo like, okay, get your game in order. Carmelo could be just as efficient with Durant because all he has to do, rebound, have a low post presence, you know, and still easily score 25 to 28. You're going to have probably two players averaging about 28 points a game if you go to the Zen. Look me in the eye, Durant. Are you a sheep <laughs> or a wolf? Get that ring, baby. Get that ring. All right. We heard the defense from. Uh, the man naked on the bare skin rug and uh, Midas Mine. The Zen. <laughs> the Zen. The Zen is pretty incredible now. We have seen the Zen do it before. I can remember when uh, Jordan left the Bulls and Scotty Pippen was left out there with Tony Kuko. And we had to make egos match. And we had to make you know, somebody come on with it. Now, was there some problems late in in the season or uh, in the Eastern Conference Finals, the different situations that kind of blew up at the end? Yeah, but that is not the problem of the Knicks right now. The Knicks need to go ahead and get to that point of having that problem and let it work itself out. And who could do that better than the Zen Master? And if Kevin Durant were to go to New York, I think immediately Carmelo would see a scorer and a hustler at least as proficient as he is. And upon recognizing that, we're going to find that Carmelo can share the ball. Carmelo's been plenty of places that there's just no reason to share the ball. You don't have a reason here. (laughs) And you know what? Um... I think if I'm Kevin Durant, I do have a little work for me. I have had my frustrations in Oklahoma, 
But the bottom line is Westbrook has put up the numbers that made me keep my mouth closed. If Carmelo can do that, we can go back to the same place. If Carmelo can't do that, hello, I'm Jordan. Mello, you got me. You're down, punk. Let's get it. <laughs> well, we heard the uh, defense from Johnny Cox. I mean, uh, from uh, Midas Mine. <laughs> <laughs> if the fangs don't fit, you got to be a sheep. <laughs> First lady to fit. Kevin Durant is wasting his time in OKC. Since going to the finals in 2012, Kevin hasn't even come close to being in the NBA finals. The Zen master will be able to use his NBA championship pedigree to lure KD and pair him with Melo. It will be a match made in heaven. Team and KD and Melo will come one of, be one of the most, and I mean really, lethal scoring front court tandem in NBA history. Melo will be a willing passer because he knows someone will be able to make the shot, unlike any of his previous Knicks teammates. There are many reasons why this will be a great place for KD. He has a great relationship with Derek Fisher, but the main reason is Phil Jackson Cachet and his propensity to win championships. Phil can do it all, and with having Kevin Durant, he will make KD a mega superstar because he will bring a championship to the New York Knicks, and he'll become a living legend. Well, you heard the defense. Kevin, you got that wolf in you. Wall Street. <laughs> First Lady, please take us to break. Stay tuned. Up next, the funnies and our favorite underwater friend on Flip It Part 2. Stop messing with them shimmy shake girls, Ronnie B. Look for Red Riding Hood. <laughs> another day, another restless night, crying myself to sleep. Another day of relentless phone calls from credit card companies demanding payment. Another day wondering if filing bankruptcy or getting one of those debt consolidation loans is the only way to go. A friend said, stop crying. Just call Sharon the debt destroyer. Sharon and her team of experts work hard to help you eliminate your credit card debt and get you and your credit back on track. No bankruptcy, no loans, your credit card debt eliminated. I call Sharon and her team of experts went right to work with a plan that made sense. I am sleeping peacefully knowing my credit card debt is being destroyed and my credit is getting back on track. Have your credit card debt destroyed and get a good night's sleep. Contact Sharon, the debt destroyer, at yourdebtdestroyed.com or call 888-431-2829. 2. Welcome back. You are listening to Bras, Panties, and Sports. It's time for the funnies. Dizzy Mac, over to you. First lady, me and the Shady Shade girls are proud to announce we have our fourth Need to Grow story of 2015. And we're still in January. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, apparently a teacher working at a school in Sarasota, Florida, ooh, down in Florida, sunny Florida, didn't learn the lesson about stealing school property and pawning it at the local pawn shop. Oh, no. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, check this out, <laughs> First Lady and Joe. Our teacher, Adam, 
cider of Pineview School in Osprey was arrested after the undercover police recorded him pining three, I said three of the school's HPE Elite laptops a total of six different times. <laughs> Six. Yes. <laughs> the school board has decided to put him on administrative leave pending the outcome of the trial, and we all know what that's going to be. Administrative yes. leave? Administrative leave. <laughs> administrative leave. <laughs> Wait, a Wait a minute. I hope it's without pay. <laughs> No, because it's not without pay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Administrative leave. Is, is this a need to grow up? Need to know he's not a heat bro. Who is this? What is this? <laughs> what is it? I'm telling you, hey, put it like this. Don't call it a comeback. Just don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, God's damn. <laughs> you know what? The water is flashing on us. It must be time for our favorite underwater friend. Damn, Flipper. It's time for Flippy. Watch out, brother. <laughs> Somebody give him a tuna. Uh, time for Flippy, where our host defend a point and then flip the script and defend the opposing view. Opposing view. <laughs> another day, another interview with Marshawn Lynch giving one-line answers. Is this really... Marshawn standing up for some perceived right to avoid the possibility of being asked a question by a reporter that, you know, might insult his sensibilities. Or is this really all about the advertising dollars at the expense of the NFL shield, you know, which happens to be the business that pays Marshawn the money? Panel defend. This is a serious matter, and Marshawn should be commended for his action. Actions. Might as mine defend. Right, B. Marshawn Lynch is a young man that is described as a running back. It is a bowling ball ball fitted out with razor blades. And he runs the ball hard, and that's what we enjoy watching. He's had some very negative experiences. In college, messing around with reporters, he realizes that you can say proper thing and they'll take your words and they will twist your words and they'll make you look like the bad guy and they'll make you look like a fool. Now, the NFL pays this man for playing football, and yes, it is entertainment, and so they want the media involved, but truthfully, we don't run around looking for what every lineman says, and we don't run around looking for what every punter says. Some people are quiet people. If they're doing their job on the field, why in the world is this such a problem that this man doesn't want to be maligned in the media when he keeps giving us what we want to see on Sunday? Marshawn should be left alone. All right, we heard the defense from the Midas mind. Dizzy Mack, defend. Man, you know, when you when you look at today's athletes, they're so willing, not that they're able, but willing to say anything when a microphone is in their mouth. <laughs> They, I, mean, I mean, we all heard it. We've seen them say anything that they wish that they had just not said. To see, Marshawn Lynch should be commended for not going there, not being pulled off the square into that. Everybody's just not going to be a media-type person that's going to be able to eloquently speak like a Russell Wilson, like a lot of the other players in the league that don't mind. So he should be commended for being serious about something that he truly believes in, which is not give the media anything to take and run to the other team with or 
to damage myself and my family by making myself look like somebody who's not aware, who is not a caring type fellow. Because, again, we can't say that Marshawn Lynch doesn't stand up for something just because he's just not falling into the media's trap of, of saying whatever. You know, he has feelings. Until he demonstrates otherwise, you know, uh, by what he says, you know, you can't take that away. I'm serious. And I'm just here so I wouldn't get fined. Uh, that would be a good thing. <laughs> Pass him another mimosa. Uh, first lady, defend. I understand why Marshawn doesn't want to talk to the media. When a player doesn't want to talk to the media, it's because he was misquoted or his words were taken out of context or the media asked questions regarding his personal life. The media day has become a three-ring circus. The NFL should not force players to speak to the media. The NFL should change their format and allow the teams to choose the individuals who should speak to the media on media day. There are plenty of players that enjoy talking and would make more interesting conversation than having a disgruntled player repeating one-liners just to comply with the league. I'm not aware of any job that forces you to speak when you don't want to. Even the court of law allows you to plead the fifth. Old Grumpy, you know why I did this flip it. <laughs> all right, all right. You have heard the panel on the defense, but this is flip it. Marshawn has made this an unneeded spectacle. If he is unhappy with the NFL and what comes with his celebrity status, go do some commercials with Icky Woods. <laughs> Busy Mac. <laughs> Go get some cold cuts, baby. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, you got to look at it. Like, you don't need the attention. You already got people looking to take anything that you do or don't do and run with it. You're going to be asked questions. Hey, they, they show your highlights. They sell your jerseys. They coin your phrases, these modes. They buy your, your products. They come to your camps. They, they do all, you know, the things that, you know, most people who are associated with you do. Part of your foundation, you know, you even employ a lot of them. And you want to go out and speak. You know, you want to be able to market yourself because someday, like Icky Woods, it could end in injury. And that dance that he did while he was playing has made him still relevant, making commercials. Hey, don't run from it like Kuta Kente. Embrace it. It only hurts for a little while. All right. Uh, uh, Midas mine. I know you have a money angle on it. Good for you. First Lady, Ronnie D, and Disney Matt, I know y'all all love seeing Marsha run as much as I love seeing him run. I ain't never seen a man hop back and forth on one leg with other defenders hanging on the opposite leg and keep taking those one-leg hops till he can break a leg free and do the beast mode down the sideline, up the center, and around the back. I got it. But the man signed a contract. It was an NFL contract. And inside that contract came a responsibility to make himself available after games, throughout the playoffs, and in Super Bowl media days, should he be fortunate enough to get there. Here we are, going on two Super Bowls in, 
And this man is still acting like a child because somebody hurt Beast Mode's feelings way back when he was in college. Baby, steak and lobster. I'm going to get some steak and lobster today. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> well, you have heard the defense tonight and uh, this morning, whatever time zone we're in, and uh, First Lady. <laughs> uh, uh, please. On the, the <laughs> on the other side of the break, we have another performance from Dante J. On shout out, please stay tuned. Go to the Coca Show! They say, stop creditors from harassing you. Consolidate your credit card debt into a loan. They say, stop those annoying calls. Simply file bankruptcy. They don't say, Consolidating credit card debt into a loan keeps you paying on that debt for years and more years with interest. They don't say file for bankruptcy and say no to a car loan, no to a mortgage for up to 11 years. Don't file bankruptcy and ruin your credit for years. Don't. Get a consolidation loan and pay years and years. Get your credit card debt destroyed. Call Sharon, the debt destroyer. Sharon and her team of experts work hard to help you eliminate your credit card debt and get you and your credit back on track. No bankruptcy, no loans, your credit card debt eliminated. Have your credit card debt destroyed. Contact Sharon, the debt destroyer, at yourdebtdestroyed.com or call 888-431-2829, extension 2. You are listening to Brawls by Action Sports. It's time for Shout Out Part 2, the picks and the finale. The music flows from around the globe, 
And me and the Shimmy Shea girls hope the artist gets a shout out from the first lady and Joe Midas Mad and the crew. Hey, first lady, over to you. What, what you got? What you got? We have another performance from Dante J. Uh, DJ, let's hear. Work that jerk. Go ahead, Shimmy girl, work it. Work, 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 don't be a jerk girl, make a thing twerk. Work, 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 don't be a jerk girl, make a thing twerk. She bad, she know it, I got money, she say show it. I pause, say Ronelli, cause she a stallion, she say, oh really, yes ma'am. You do it, I got money, and I do it, my whole wide, I blew it, clean it up, I'm blew it, and uh, the way she poppin' so nasty, we at the spot, no need to be classy, ask a classic, Freddie Blassie, you got the new look, it's still in the plastic, whoa, whoa, you do things most pros don't know, if it was viral, I wouldn't like it, I'm like a kid, too excited, work, 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 don't be a jerk girl, make a thing twerk, work, 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 don't be a jerk girl, make a thing twerk, verse two, verse two, tonight it's me versus you, you the champ, that's how you feel, I'm coming for the title, that's the real, get ready, get loose, Get the motion in that caboose. Work, 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 work. Spin it like a cyclone. You like the Burberry? That's my color. I wish I'd give that ass a Lizzo. So we can menage all night Lizzo. Oh, no. Don't say you never did this before. If so, let me explain. If I let you hop in that thing. Oh, oh. Girl, you didn't know I'm a pro. Work, 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 work. Work, 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 don't be a jerk girl, make a thing twerk. Work, 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 don't be a jerk girl, make a thing twerk. Work, 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 don't be a jerk girl, make a thing twerk. Work, work, work. That was work that jerk. Dizzy Mac. I know the Shimmy Shake girls were working the jerk by twerking over there. What you gonna oh, give yeah. this song? Oh yeah, you saw Roddy being uh minus mine over there getting getting twerked on. So uh Yeah. You know, yeah, you did. That's my boy Joe over there getting twerked on. <laughs> you shouting it out, huh? That's right, shout out. Okay. Joe <laughs> Mr Conservative. Oh, no, 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 Mr Conservative. He was jerking. What do you think well, about work that jerk? You know what? I, I saw I, I saw two bubbles and they was moving up and down at different times in different sections. I was impressed. That sounds a lot more gorilla, and so I got to give that a shout out. All right, shout it out, <laughs> right, Roddy B. Well, I would uh, I try to imagine the, the the track in a club, and uh, I'm gonna say they stayed in a lane. Um, uh, it could have, there was some, I, I mean, it was good be kind of, you know, to, but there was something that didn't really make it stand out. So, uh, I'm going to give it a yell. Okay, you're going to give it a yell. No, I'm going to give it a shout out. I was jamming to that. I have a nice little beat. Uh, yeah, it's a club song, Ronnie B. So most club songs, I think they just have like one-liners. So I, I think it was great. 
Uh, uh, hey, hey I, 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 did, I did give it a yell. I gave it okay, a yell. Okay, we did give it a yell. Okay. <laughs> well, that's the end of the shout out. If you like what you heard from Dante J, check him out at besuave.org. That's B E S U A V E dot org. If you would like to be heard or have, have any comments, you can send your emails and tracks to panties at oldgrumpyradio.com. It's time for our final picks for the NFL season. Hmm, a little bit sad. It's the end of the football season is coming up to this weekend. You guys sad? Very no. Nice. Okay. Okay. It was a good Thank run, though. It, 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 has, it hasn't hit us yet. <laughs> oh, it hasn't hit you yet. Okay, well, it hit hasn't, me. hasn't the finality of it. <laughs> yes, okay. Well, let's look at last week's Super Bowl picks. If you remember, it was Team Irvin against Team Carter. And, Joe, say it isn't so. You were the only winner because Team Irvin won which got you an extra three points. Now, Andre went with the optional categories, and we said that was a trap. And, yes, it was a trap because in every category, it ended up in a tie. So we deemed that Andre couldn't get any points. So going into the Super Bowl, Dizzy Mack is up by, well, he has 316 points. Um following him very closely at 305, and right behind my tail is Joe at 299, and Andre is bringing up the rear at a close 235. But it is going to be quite interesting because our producers have made it very interesting with all these different points in different categories. So let's get right to it. Patriots versus Seahawks. Which player will be the GOAT and who will be eating the Super Bowl cheese? All right, Joe, who do you have, the Patriots or the Seahawks? Oh, let me, miss, let me say you also get 35 points for the correct answer and 35 points for the incorrect answer. I, uh, I, I hate know. to say this, but the, uh, the Patriots are going to win this game. Mm-hmm. And I think the uh, uh, the player who will be the GOAT will be Richard Sherman. And I think Tom Brady's going to eat the cheese. Okay. Dizzy Mac. Okay, well, it, I, I like both teams, no doubt. But the Seahawks will repeat. Okay, you're going for back-to-back titles. And who's going to get the? Who's going to be the goat? And who'll be eating the cheese? Um, Marshawn Lynch will be eating the cheese, and the Garrett Blunt will be the goat. Okay. Well, I'm going with the Patriots. And Tom Brady will be eating the Super Bowl cheese. And Russell Wilson will be the goat. Yeah. Ronnie B, do we have a pick for Andre? Okay, well, Tom Terrific and the Brady Bunch. He and Belichick, I mean, Belichick will find a way. Hold yeah. oh, no. on. I'm not going to win with the I'm not going to win with the again. You know, we want the Seahawks. <laughs> That's right. You picked them last year. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. So, so we're going with Tom Terrific, and uh, uh, the Garrett Blunt will be the guy eating the cheese, and the guy that, that the player that will um, will be uh, be the goat on the Seahawks. Um, is going to be okay. Just one okay. second. There's uh, the, the the one player that was standing out, and, and it's the uh, it's the kicker. 
Oh, okay. All right. Let's the kicker will be. Don't remember his name? Oh. Uh, yeah, the Shimmy Shake Girls are twerking on them still. That's why you over there. Um, uh, yeah, the kicker will be. I know. I'm trying to see what's got there. his attention there. He's uh, he, yeah. he, Okay. There's but a, let's move on because you know what? There's no points at this kicker was so. shake, The kicker was shaky the last two games. Yeah. Okay, he's been shaky, so he continued to be shaky. All right. Quarterback with the most interceptions, Brady or Wilson? I'm going to go, believe it or not, even though I'm picking them to win, I'm going to go with Brady. I think he's going to have more what? interceptions than Wilson. All right. Dizzy Mac, who do you have? Um, Brady. Joe? Russell Wilson. I know he had four last time, last game. And Ronnie B or Andre? Uh, Russell Wilson. Okay, so split on that one. The team with a special team touchdown. Patriots, Seahawks, neither or both. And that was 50 points for the correct and 75 points for incorrect. Excuse me, 25 points for incorrect. And I forgot to mention for the quarterback with the most inception is 50 points for correct and 25 points for incorrect. So the team with special team, I'm going with neither. Ronnie B, what does Andre have? And uh, uh, I'm going to say the Patriots. Dizzy Mac? Neither. And Joe? Neither. Okay. Gronkowski will have more than two touchdowns. I'm going to say no. Dizzy Mac? No. Joe? No. Ronnie B for Andre? Uh, Gronkowski will have more than two touchdowns. So you say yes. Richard Sherman will have at least one interception. Dizzy Mac. No. Joe. No. Andre for Ronnie B. Ronnie B for Andre. No. I'm the only one that's saying yes. Okay. Even though he has a bad arm, don't let that fool you. Most <laughs> rushing yards uh, by either the Patriots or Seahawks. I'm going to say the Seahawks has will have the most rushing yards. Ronnie B for Andre. Patriots. Hmm. Joe. When you heard Blunt and the Pat. Patriots. Okay. Dizzy Mac. The Seahawks. Okay. Most sacks. Now you know what we never clarify, but we've always mean the defensive sacks. So which team will have? The most defensive sacks. Is it going to be the Patriots or the Seahawks? And, again, this is a 50-point correct, 25-point incorrect. I'm saying the Patriots will sack Russell Wilson more than the Seahawks will sack Tom Brady. Dizzy Mac. Seahawks will get more sacks. Okay. Roddy B. Patriots. Joe. Seahawks will have more sacks. Okay. All right. Optional special bonus. Marshawn Lynch will fumble the ball. A hundred points bonus for the correct choice and seventy five for the incorrect choice. Well, I'm gonna hey, we down to the last game. I'm taking this bonus and I'm gonna say Marshawn Lynch will not fumble the ball. Are you opting in, Joe? I have to. You just did, and I will say the same thing. Okay. You will not Diz- fumble the ball. Dizzy Mac. You know I'm in a. I'm on one knee on this bed, stand rug naked, and I'm rolling the dice. Mm-hmm. No, she will not fumble. Ronnie B for Andre. Marshall Lynch will fumble the ball. Hmm. Tom Brady will throw a hold up, pick. Uh, hold up, hold up, hold up, Jose. He said Marshall Lynch. 
Yeah, yeah, Marshall Lynch won't fumble. No, Marshall, I said Marshall, Marshall Lynch will fumble the ball. Okay, let's, let's get the name clarified. Marshawn Lynch, okay. And you said he will for Andre. Okay, let's do the next one. The next optional. Tom Brady will throw a pick six. A 150-point bonus for the correct choice. A hundred, a negative 100 for the incorrect choice. I'm going to take this bonus, and I'm going to say, no, he will not throw a pick six. Ronnie B. No pick six. Joe. No pick six. Dizzy Mac. No pick six. Okay. That will end the picks. So we'll see how we'll do with this Super Bowl, and it's going to be quite interesting because we got a lot of points coming in or going. <laughs> Minus and positives. Okay, so let's get to what we missed. Busy Mac, what did you miss? I missed Serena Williams won her 19th Grand Slam by knocking off Maria Sharapova in the Australian Open. Okay, Joe, minus mine. I know you didn't miss any money, but what did you miss? First lady, I missed that uh, Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather actually got a chance to talk to each other directly at a Miami Heat game. And I was there. And I was there, and I saw it with, with my own two eyes. Good. Yes. Awesome. And they're getting ready to come to agreement with a contract. So... We can talk about that later, about Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather. Mm. It was interesting, very interesting. They booed. They actually booed Floyd and cheered Manny. Did he look scared, Did he look scared while he was face-to-face? No. It was quite interesting, and I got camera shots. I was, I'm about, I'll send you some camera shots of it. So, anyway, uh, Ronnie B., what did you miss? Uh, what I missed was the um, the uh, what I didn't miss was the uh, skinny goalposts during the Pro Bowl. Oh, okay. <laughs> to make it harder for the kickers to get extra points and field goals, I, I didn't miss it. You didn't miss it. They, they can keep that one. Well, okay, they can keep it. Well, what I missed, I missed the Atlanta Hawks. They are really on a tremendous streak. They have won 18 games in a row. And can you name somebody on the Atlanta Hawks team? I know they really playing. I know. I know Al Horford. But anyway, they're not that many, um, you know, people that really know the Atlanta Hawks. And they are really balling. So, Salute to the ATL. This is Cheryl Smith and the crew, and you have been listening to Bras, Panties, and Sports.